Well, there's a lot of criticism being thrown at the Fed. In fact, this morning on CNBC, Wharton Business School professor Jeremy Siegel really pulled no punches. The interesting thing is I look back a year ago, September, it was exactly as tight as it is today, and he never said anything. Honestly, Chairman Powell, I think should offer the American people an apology for such poor monetary policy that he's pursued and the Fed has pursued over the last two years. So is that criticism fair? Didn't Congress and trillions in new spending there also play a big role in how we got here? Let's bring in now former Federal Reserve Vice Chairman Roger Ferguson and KPMG Chief Economist Diane Swank. Roger, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. You're a former member of the Fed. I'm sure you're friends with Jay Powell. I know you know these people. But do they deserve the criticism that they are now beginning to face? I don't think they deserve uh, the criticism as uh, vociferously as it has been addressed. Um, and so certainly there was a mistake made in the discussion around transitory that proved to be wrong. Having said that, this inflation has a number of underlying causes. Some are domestic, monetary and fiscal stimulus that may be uh, overshot. But we also have an unusual set of circumstances, including a shooting war in Europe for the first time in two generations that had a huge impact on oil prices and also uh, food prices. And we had a very uneven opening from a once in a hundred year event, a pandemic. So, uh, yes, some criticism for falling into the transitory uh, camp, but also let's recognize this inflation has had numerous causes, some of which are outside of their control. Yeah, it's fair. It certainly is fair, Diane. But I would point to the fact that inflation in October of last year, well before the invasion, was also running at nearly 40-year highs. In fact, we did an inflation wall back in, I think, May of 2021 on my show on CNBC to talk about how things were starting to run hot. I don't think anybody doubts the initial reaction to the supply chain, to the pandemic, to COVID. I think it was the length of time that money was kept so easy. Well, there's no question about that. And I do, and I agree with Roger. I mean, let's face it, <clears throat> at the end of the day, there were a lot of factors that contributed to this inflation and the war in Ukraine certainly was one that just added fuel to an already well-kindled fire. Getting to your point that there was inflation out there, I was one of those people arguing, I think this has got more legs to it. It's not just transitory. They did sort of do a mea culpa on that. Remember, it was a year ago in September, they were starting to talk about tapering asset purchases and thinking about tapering asset purchases. So we're a year into that, and it took a long time, and we still are, you know, got to see by the end of this month that the Fed can meet the mandate on the, getting to that $95 billion a month in reduction in assets by allowing their asset purchases to mature off their balance sheet. So that's one issue. But I think from the Fed's perspective, they're now in the position where they feel they're choosing the lesser of two evils. Hopefully, what they're attempting to do is to slow down the economy, raise unemployment. Yes, I do think there's going to be a recession. I think they're a little fanciful in their own estimates, but do it over a long period of time and hopefully mm. grind inflation out of the economy and not repeat the mistakes of the 1970s and 1960s, the stop-and-go policies of then, when we had a much more corrosive inflation and stagflation take root. That said, it's easier said than done. And I think the focus on sort of grinding inflation out with a slow slowdown and a mild recession is what all central banks are doing. And I worry that this is happening synchronously mm -hmm. around the world. And it is true that we're exporting some of those rate hikes abroad every time we have a rate hike here and the dollar strengthens. But I think that there is a synchronicity to what's happening that could amplify rate hikes and make it a much deeper global recession at the same time that it's not synchronized. These are not yeah. coordinated moves by central banks. Well, Roger, we, we call Jay Powell and the Fed now hawks, right, because they're aggressive about inflation. I worry more that Chairman Powell may become a sacrificial lamb because there is already the political attacks that are beginning. We saw Elizabeth Warren this morning come out and effectively look for blame on the Fed as we head toward midterms. And I don't want to over politicize it, but how insulated do you think Powell and company can be for what are probably going to be more vocal attacks by members of Congress who want to say to the American people, it's not our fault. 
it's their fault. Well, I certainly hope that they're insulated. Uh, there's a reason why we have independent central banks and why that has become the norm around the world. And the reason is that fighting inflation, when it occurs, is unpopular. Raising interest rates is an unpopular act. Paul Volcker saw it. He is now today revered for having uh, saved us from inflation <clears throat> that was out of control. And so I think it's really important for the public to recognize, as Jay Powell has said, that inflation is very corrosive. It affects the lower middle income and lower class people more than anybody else. Uh, and so it is really important to get it out of the system. And that's why we have independent central banks. Not surprising to hear politicians and others criticize them, because it's pretty clear that politicians, if left to their own devices, are unlikely to ever raise interest rates and you know deal with the questions of inflation, which is why the Fed was created as a congressional mandate to be independent. So, you know, I'm sure there will be criticism. There's been criticism in the past. I think at the end of the day, uh, society, America, is made better off by getting inflation under control. And unfortunately, there will be some pain. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but as I think Jay Powell has said, Chairman Powell has said correctly, pain later uh, is much worse than taking some pain now. And, and it is clear that there will be some pain now.